children will enter our classrooms at a variety of different stages of development in, in their academic development, their social development, their emotional development. Children are not gonna all come in at the exact same place. And that's okay. We're designed, our whole approach is designed to, to meet children exactly where they are and provide just the right support for their self-construction. This is true even when children come into our classrooms without some of the math skills in place we might have expected. We're okay, we can handle this. We have ways to support that development. There are any number of reasons children might come into our classrooms without those skills in place. Maybe the child has not had a strong uh, academic experience prior to the time they come into our classroom, whether they, it was that they didn't have a preschool or primary experience or a Montessori experience, whether they didn't have a strong one. I mean, we don't know. Um, it could be that the child was ill or the family was ill, or there's been some sort of trauma that has occurred in the child's life. Uh, there's any number of reasons. And it could be that this child does have some sort of um, undiagnosed special need. Maybe, we don't know. It doesn't matter. We're gonna approach every child the same way when they first come in and then determine what more they might need based on our you know, really careful and thoughtful experience in supporting them. Now, the primary presentations for supporting children's developing academic skills in, in uh, math are extraordinary. They're so well designed, they work so well for children in the first plane of development. They're designed for those characteristics. So as amazing as they are and as tempting as it might be to use those presentations to support children's skill development in the elementary, we have to keep in mind the characteristics of children in the second plane of development. We have to design our approach to these skills with the, you know, with the reasoning mind and the imagination at the forefront of our planning. So we might be able to take a, some of these presentations from primary a little bit, but we have to adapt them. We have to use more humor and more language in general. We have to try to ignite reasoning in the, in the work. We also wanna leave a lot of room for the child to do some of this discovery on their own. So we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to connect the child to the materials, uh, be um, engaging, spark interest, and then leave the child to do some work. Now, children who are struggling with some academic skills will quickly uh, realize that they are perhaps lagging behind some of their peers. They're very aware of this, uh, and it can cause a lot of sensitivity and worry for the children. So we wanna be sure that we are partnering with the children, that we're excited and engaged, and that we're supporting them in acquiring these skills. We also don't want to further isolate this child by only offering math lessons in the area where they're struggling. So we don't wanna say, oh, this child struggles to do subtraction, therefore those are the only lessons I'm giving in math to this child. All the other math that we can offer any children in the elementary class, we're going to offer to children that are struggling with some basic skills. So sure, you may be struggling with subtraction, but I'd like to introduce you to this idea of what a factor is. A child can do that. Those things can happen in parallel. We don't have to only work on one concept at a time with the children. Remember, we're sowing lots of seeds. So we want to bolster this child's confidence and independence with some of these basic math skills that are going to serve them as they go further in math, but simultaneously still give presentations, introductory presentations in all other areas of mathematics to support that development and to help them feel connected and on equal footing with their peers. At the beginning of a school year, you're going to want to do some, some assessment of the children. And this doesn't have to be a formal assessment. You can do this informally. So you'll, you're gonna give some presentations in math and you're going to watch and see how children respond. You're going to see, oh, this child never joins in the counting games or the math fact games that we play. 
or you know, keep an eye out for some of those things that occur when you're starting to wonder about a child's skill level. Also, you can just talk to the children. Hey, let's sit down and let's write down on, on paper some of our favorite things to do in math. I, you know, I'm gonna do an addition problem. What does someone else want to do? You can do any number of little things to just gauge where children are in their math development. You don't wanna have too much of the year go by before you've really gotten a sense of who might need some extra support. Try to get a sense of where children are. And you can do this informally. It doesn't have to be a test. If you see children are struggling or you observe that you don't see a child engaging in certain activities, then you should set a clear plan for supporting that child. So within the first six weeks of school or so, make a plan for those children who need added support and plan to do daily work with them on the skills that need that support. This work needs to be done primarily by you as the guide. Children need to develop that relationship with you. They need to feel confident and connected with you. Uh, you're the one trained in child, child development. It's your job to do this work. If we relegate this work to other adults only, and the child is never working on this with you, we're sending some perhaps really dangerous messages to the children where the child could interpret this as, you know, I'm, I'm so behind my teacher can't even help me, or I'm so behind my teacher doesn't have time to help me. We don't want to send any of those kinds of messages. So most of this work should happen with the teacher. And if you need added support, depending on what's going on in your classroom and how many of these children need this support, you know, you can bring in a few other adults, but they should supplement this work, not be the only one doing this work. You still need to be engaged and connected with the child as they, as they make their progress in these basic skills. It's also vital that you keep really careful records of the progress. So you wanna be able to track whether a child is progressing or not. Because at the end of six weeks of this kind of daily practice with basic skills, if at the end of six weeks you're not seeing progress, that might be a signal that you need to get some help and you talk to your administration about how to, to further support this child. Or perhaps you're seeing greater progress than you expected. You know, you want to be able to have that data and clearly be able to uh, uh, see what, you know, where the child needs support and where the child does not and the progress that has been made. We really have to approach this work with children that are feeling, um, you know, that are struggling with some basic skills. We have to approach it with optimism and confidence. I'm here to help you. We can do this together. I have complete confidence in your ability to do this. That's the kind of message we have to give the children. Not, oh, I can't believe you don't know your math facts, right? We want to support them in thinking, yeah, this is doable. This is doable. It may be a little hard, but we can do it together. We need to make sure that these presentations are brief. So they're happening every day. We're going to do, hey, we're going to do, let's do a little bit more of uh, those math facts today. We're going to, and we want to make them fun and brief. Uh, we don't want to, you know, can be tempting when a child who's struggling with a skill is working with us on that skill and we're having a good time and they're making some progress. It can be tempting to say, oh, well, I'll just do it for another 15 minutes or half an hour. No, we want to leave the children with this work. We want to stop it when they're having the most fun and they're making the most progress. We want them to be excited about it. We don't want them to get to the point where it's drudgery and we've gone too long. So do a 10 minute session or a five minute session. And if it went really well and you wanna do a little more, do it later in the day, or you can wait till the next day, that's fine. Uh, but it should just be brief and fun and engaging all the time. Also remember that our albums contain lots of opportunity for practice of basic skills within the presentations about a different concept. We can get addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division practice in so many other areas of the album. We do that in, uh, I mean, we do that kind of throughout. We do it in fractions, we do it in decimal fractions, signed numbers, uh, other number bases. I mean, it, 
we have so many places where the practice of these skills can continue. So it's we we want to just be really careful not to think that they have to have every single one of these skills in place before we present these further ideas. Sometimes those skills can develop simultaneously. Multiples is a great place to practice uh, your multiplication math facts. All sorts of opportunities and avenues to practice different basic skills throughout our albums while we're presenting new concepts. So don't forget about those. Don't get stuck on subtraction uh, and forget about the ways they can practice that later in different work in the albums. So remember, this has to be fun work. This has to be engaging work. Children need to feel like you're part of their team and this is possible. And we have to be okay meeting children wherever they are. I don't care if they're six years old and they come in without these skills or they're 10 years old and they come in without these skills. We're gonna connect with them. We're gonna meet them at that point and we're gonna say, hey, we can work on this together.